Hi, thank you for coming to look at my uh, video talk today. I'm going to talk to you about how within species variation in winter cold tolerance will likely affect our climate change predictions, specifically looking at wine grapes. For physi physiological tolerances, they dictate the climate envelope that a species can um, grow in. And this combines with the dispersal ability of that species um, to give us a species distribution. But we know that the climate side of things that is, is changing, um, and this is likely going to affect the, uh, the climate envelope locations of species, and therefore have some effect on species distributions. But exactly how much effect, we're not sure. And first we need a much better um, understanding of the, uh, the physiological tolerances of a species um, and how they interact with climate. But this is a difficult thing to do if we don't have very much information, for example, uh, for many wild species. And this is a problem that the ecologists have uh, dealt with before um, by turning to agricultural crop species. Ecology has a long history of turning to these species uh, to model physiological uh, tolerances. In fact, most fundamental physiological understanding was first developed in crops and was then applied to wild species. And we can do this because the, uh, the physiological um, tolerance side of the equation remains the same and it's the dispersal side which uh, is replaced for crop species with grower decisions to dictate the current species distribution. So if we can understand the physiological tolerances for, um, for plants, we can then plug this into an equation for crops if we want to uh, add grow decisions to figure out where we should be growing things, or we can plug it into an uh, equation for wild species um, by combining it with dispersal abilities. So our aim in this study uh, first is to build a model to help predict physiological tolerances um, in uh, woody species specifically, and also to uh, drill down into the potential effect of um, varieties. Uh, or with it, variation within a species. And we'd like to link that eventually to climate change. Uh, we're focusing on uh, the crop species Vitis vinifera, so uh, wine grapes, um, and the cold, and we're using cold tolerance as our physiological tolerance to climate um, factor. We're uh, focusing on wine grapes because they are an important uh, economic crop and they have a long history um, of uh, records. So we already have a pretty relatively good understanding of their physiology and their responses to climate. And they also have very well defined varieties within wine grape, which can show different physiological responses. So we can use these to assess the potential importance of phenotypic variation in this uh, situation. And cold tolerance is also one of the few uh, times where we've been able to use physiological tolerances to make a link directly between rain shifts and climate change, with the case of the study of the southern pine beetle in the Americas. But of course you may think of uh, wine and uh, vineyards as the warm, lush places. Why would they have to worry about cold tolerance? Actually in the winter some why vineyards can get very cold, cold enough to potentially to kill the plants. Before we go any farther into this, I just want to explain um, the unit of cold tolerance. Um, we generally measure cold tolerance in uh, LTE, which is the low temperature exotherm, which basically means the temperature where buds die. Um, and I'm using LTE 50, which is the temperature where 50% of the buds of a wine, a vineyard or a wine grape crop will die. So a, a very important uh, economic uh, situation for the growers. Um, and uh, wine grapes don't stay the same amount of tolerant to uh, cold throughout the year. Instead, they um, gain cold tolerance as the autumn progresses, as they go into dormancy. And then they, uh, during the heart of the winter, they maintain this a maximum level of cold tolerance before the spring when they start losing cold tolerance as they start preparing for the, the growing season and bu bu bursting buds. And if the air temperature drops below the maximum cold tolerance 
of a vine at any point, this is where you start seeing the, the bud die off and the potentially the whole plant die off. So it can be very influential for uh, crop management. My analysis is focusing on the Okanagan Valley in uh, BC in Canada. And this is a, a, a long narrow valley with a lake at the bottom of the valley and um, many vineyards um, arranged up and down the valley on either side of the lake. This uh, area of wine grape growing has had some big historical problems with cold winters. Um, and also there's been some really interesting shifts in the last couple of decades in terms of which varieties are growing by the uh, vineyards. From um, more cold tolerant but less lucrative hybrid varieties to more lucrative but less tolerant pure vitis vinifera wine grape varieties. And it would be interesting to see then if we can link this change back to our cold tolerance models and climate change. So our research questions, we have three of them. Specifically, one, can we model cold tolerance using just air temperature data? Traditional methods um, to model cold tolerance are very data heavy and involve knowing hardiness throughout the air. You have to know what the cold, uh, what the temperature was yesterday and the day before and the day before that. How does that link to cold tolerance? And it involves knowing some other parameters for plants. And we basically don't have this amount of information for many species. We would like to do something simpler where you basically plug air temperature directly into the model and you just get cold tolerance out. And this, if it works, would be much easier to apply to a wider variety of species. Secondly, we would like to uh, assess how much phenotypic variation is uh, attributable to varietal differences. Um, and we would like, uh, we would like to uh, assess basically how much should we worry about within the species variation when mapping physiological tolerances. Can we uh, just get away with, for example, looking at mean species values? And finally, we want to ask um, if there's been fewer kill winters or really cold winters where the temperature drops below what the wine grapes can cope with in the Okanagan Valley recently. And does that link to um, cold tolerance um, predicted values from our model in the Okanagan? Um, to do this, we're using a dose response curve model. And this model um, or type of model is initially developed for assessing medicines or toxicity in the pharmaceutical studies, but they're also potentially useful for cold tolerance and other physiological tolerances. They have four biologically relevant parameters, in this case the maximum and minimum cold tolerance, the rate of change of cold tolerance as air temperature changes, and an inflection point for the sigmoidal curve. Uh, here is my model if you like looking at models. Um, but the main take home from this is that we include some random effects in our model. First, we have uh, random effects for variety on the maximum cold tolerance and also the rate of change of cold tolerance. So this means varieties can have different values for these parameters, but we also get a general mean value for the overall species. We also have a random effect of site on maximum cold tolerance. Um, so we used centralized weather data for our model um, because that's what we had available. But we know that some sites up and down the valley will be quite a bit cooler or warmer than this centralized weather station. So we expect sites to differ quite a bit in how much um, they, uh, they have maximum cold tolerance. And it's by comparing the magnitude of effect of variety and sites on the maximum cold tolerance that we can see how important phenotypic variation specifically is for wine grapes. For example, does choosing a more cold tolerant variety make as much difference as choosing a warmer site? Um, so our results. Good news is the model fit fairly well. Um, the, uh, the, line, the blue line in the middle here shows the mean prediction. And the darker blue ribbon around uh, the, the thinner one around the line, that's a 95% credible interval for the mean cold tolerance. And then the lighter blue ribbon is the 95% credible interval for the whole data, including the effect of site and variety. 
And the model predicts um, cold tolerance, maximum cold tolerance of around minus 24 to minus 23 degrees on average for a, um, a, a wine grape. But this value differs by variety because the varieties do have different maximum cold tolerances. For example, Riesling here can generally cope with temperatures maybe two or three degrees colder than Shiraz, which is the, the least cold tolerant. And the good news is these results are in line with our current understanding from uh, the, the growers of how the vines differ. We also found, as expected, quite a lot of variation between sites, with warmer sites having uh, vines with a few degrees less cold tolerance than cooler sites. And this difference is a, a very similar magnitude of difference um, to that of the varieties. But there are a surprise in the model, which suggests we still have a little bit of work to do on it, which is that our models did not detect different rates of change um, of cold tolerance with different varieties, despite the fact that it found differences in the maximum cold tolerance. And this doesn't make very much physiological sense. Well, we think this is because our model currently does not um, differ between the um, gaining tolerance in the autumn and losing it in the spring. So we have two different slopes potentially. And these two different slopes, they could be doing quite different things. It might be that uh, the wine grapes all um, gain tolerance at the same rate, but they lose it at different rates. And by lumping this all together, we're losing these, this nuance of information. Um, so here's some preliminary data on the, uh, the climate and the weather situation. And these are two different uh, weather stations in the Okanagan Valley. And this data suggests a link between maximum cold tolerance and recent climatic um, shifts and uh, choices of variety. So this blue bar on these graphs, this is the, um, the estimated cold tolerance. The top of the blue bar would be where the less cold tolerant varieties like Shira, uh, Shiraz sit, and the bottom is the more cold tolerant varieties like Riesling. And you can see that the, the black line does cross into this box quite a lot um, between 1960 and 1990, but from 1990 onwards, it doesn't drop into this danger zone where the wine grapes would be damaged. And this is, um, it's about the 1990s where they started growing uh, less cold tolerant varieties. So that links together and watch the space for more information there. So um, to conclude, um, dose response models, they do show promise as a simple and less hungry um, method for predicting maximum cold tolerance. And they could perhaps <coughs> be used uh, to help define climatic envelopes for other species. And this would help us make um, better agricultural decisions and also potentially model wildlife, um, wild species niches, um, depending on whether we put grower decisions or dispersal into our species distribution equation. Um, but we also found clear um, evidence that, um, that variety or within species variation is important. So for growers, this means that they, they need to be uh, careful when they're choosing varieties and that choice of variety may have a strong effect on where they can start increasingly growing uh, wine grapes. Um, and then for wild species, we need to um, be careful we don't inaccurately predict where species can go based on a, a, a small amount of variation um, in uh, tolerances that uh, we look at with, within the species. And it also means, uh, suggests uh, that we need to do a little bit more work on our model to capture these differences in the different varieties of so the phenotypic variation um, during the autumn and spring periods, um, because at the moment our model won't pick those up, um, but they could be extremely important, especially if the species is struggling with uh, vulnerability during cold snaps in the spring and the autumn. And so just to finish, I would like to thank the Temporal Ecology Lab. So this is my lab at UBC. Thank you for uh, all your help and assistance and um, just leave you with my contact details. And thank you very much for your time.